Assalamu alaikum. Okay, today I am going to tell you about the posterior cranial fossa that is an important part of the skull. We divide the skull into three fossas as I already told you. The anterior first is the anterior cranial fossa. The one which is deeper to it is known as middle cranial fossa and the one which is deepest is known as posterior cranial fossa. These two are already explained so now we will go for the posterior cranial fossa. First of all we will go with the boundaries. Boundary is the anterior boundary. It is bounded by the petrous part of temporal bone here on both the sides. This is the petrous part of temporal bone. Then in the middle it is bounded by dorsum cellae. Dorsum cellae I already told you and here this is the posterior most part of the boundary of the body of sphenoid. This part is known as dorsum cellae. So dorsum cellae in the mid and, uh, medial side and laterally both the petrous part of temporal bone these make the anterior boundary of the posterior cranial fossa. Then the posterior boundary, whole of the occipital bone. We know this most posterior bone is the occipital bone and if in any bone of the skull, the expanded portion is known as squamous part and the portion which is very much condylite type like this, any portion which is shaped like this which means a condyle type shape, this is known as the mestoid part. So. This is the expanded part of the occipital bone. So it is known as squamous portion of the occipital bone making the posterior boundary of the posterior cranial fossa. This hole is the actually posterior cranial fossa, this one. See? Okay. After that, on each side, what is the boundary? On each side, boundary is occipital, of course. This is also bounded by occipital bone. And partially, it is bounded by parietal bone. See? Agar main, if I see, uh, if I look from this side, you know, here is the boundary. This is the ending of the parietal bone and this is the starting of the occipital bone. So lateral boundary is formed, uh, formed partially by the parietal bone and I, as I already told you anything that is condylite type is known as mestoid part. So this is known as mestoid part of parietal bone and remaining is formed by the occipital bone. So these are the boundaries of the posterior cranial fossa. Now we will see that floor, uh, what makes the floor of the posterior cranial fossa. First of all in the center. This is known as the portion which is called clivus. I will explain you it later. This uh, portion which is just going downward like this. This is known as clivus from here to here. Okay? Then after that this is the opening known as foramen magnum for the uh, outgoing of the brain stem that later on forms the spinal cord. And after that the posterior boundary or the floor is formed by this occipital bone. And laterally the floor form is formed by the occipital bone, all of the condylite part. Now after that, we will see the main features, what are the main features which are related to the posterior cranial fossa. Okay, now let us see what happens in the different features of it. First of all, we will start from here, this part of the post posterior part of the uh, posterior cranial fossa, sorry. This part is the part which is sloping downwards from above to down. As I already told you that this whole bone which I am marking now, this one and this one is known as sphenoid bone and the center portion of it, this one is known as the body of sphenoid. So this part portion which is sloping downward is known as clivus. Upper portion of the clivus is formed by the small portion of the body of the sphenoid because body of the sphenoid ends here almost. See, one second I will focus it better like this. Okay. Now, here this portion is formed of this portion of the clivus is formed by the body of the sphenoid and remaining portion the sloping portion of the clivus is formed by the occipital bone because whole of this is the occipital bone and partially occipital bone also comes here like this so this portion which i am marking with the pen is totally formed by the occipital bone or if i say it more pro appropriately it is the base basal part of the occipital bone or the basilar part of the occipital bone so if anywhere you find a word written as the, known as basio occipit or basi occipit it is not something so much difficult or out of the world it is just this clivus because it is formed by basilar part of occipital bone along with this small portion of the body of the sphenoid i hope now you understand it after that we have the foramen magnum. Foramen magnum I already told you is a hole or opening from where the brain stem passes downward and later on it forms the spinal cord. After that we have in the mid plane this crest and this protuberance. Now see whatever these things are. We know on the posterior side we have a uh, invagination here like this. 
this is known as external occipital protuberance and exactly opposite to that inside the skull in the posterior cranial fossa we have another protuberance this one it is invaginated outside and it is known as ex internal occipital protuberance see which i am marking with my pen this ex internal occipital protuberance has both the sides these sulci sulcus or groove is anything which is deeply curved see here we have the deep curves be behind or beneath these two lines so this line and this line these are known as the transverse sulci or transverse sulcus of both the sides now after that this internal occipital protuberance we have from here to here this crest see internal occipital protuberance is only this protruded area and after that from here to here see this line we have the crest this is known as internal occipital crest see these are very very important features of the bone so you must remember this internal occipital protuberance and crest is this one internal occipital crest these are known as transverse sulci transverse sulcus when move anteriorly they become continuous with the sigmoid sulcus now this sulcus when uh, from here to here this is known as transverse sulcus one of the right side and one of the left side it ends till here and after that from here to here this sulcus or grooved area is known as sigmoid sulcus similarly it from here up to here this is known as sigmoid sulcus so i hope you understood these terms after these two terms let us go with some of the holes which are present here clivus on both the sides of the clivus this is the clivus and on the right side as it well is on the left side we have small fissures see one second in the next part i'll explain 